As we switch from crazily consuming the world's natural resources without a thought for the future to a reuse and recover model, more and more people, businesses and governments are realising that the only way forward is the circular economy. It's a huge subject and to hear more, let's meet today's guest, Estelle Brashlianov, Chief Operating Officer of the Global Veolia Group, headquartered in France. I'm Sarah Lockett, welcome to The Business Debate. Estelle, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Very happy to be here. So how widespread is the circular economy mindset? I mean, is 90% of the world still just consuming, consuming? I guess the mindset is widespread. The question is, you know, is it put into action? And um, But I'm very hopeful. Maybe, say, 2019 could be the, the year where we, we see a Galileo moment where, you know, like we realize suddenly that the, the Earth, instead of, you know, being flat, is actually round. And the tech make dispose model is over, and we can go into more uh, round and causing loops. Use waste materials, use waste heat, waste water to actually transforming into another loop of production and something else. And you're involved in many different aspects of the circular economy, in waste management and also in water and energy in some 40 countries. But what projects or particular aspects would you pick out that you're doing which are particularly interesting? So I, I guess it's a good description what you said. Veolia is putting circular economy into action, into real stuff, you know, for our customers. So uh, we're making it real, you know, transforming it into action. So if I take a few examples, I have a few samples here, maybe I could... Uh, go through through some of them. Um, this is plastic recycling. Uh, this bottle of milk was actually done out of purely recycled plastic, an old bottle of milk. So you can imagine in the meantime, there is a lot of processing to get to the such high hand quality that you put back, you know, food into it. Uh, we are actually developing this type of solution in plastic all across Europe and actually Asia. We have platform in Korea, in Japan, and actually very soon in China as well so that we can provide an alternative to virgin plastic to all the manufacturing companies in real life. Um, this is another type of plastic, uh, but I'm not so sure you can guess what it's made of. Actually, it's made out of human sludge. Human uh, that's sludge. Uh, yes, that's a, a, an R&D project. You know, it doesn't fly, I would say, you know, economically yet, uh, but we are very, very hopeful it, it can and it might at one point. And we might know you for refuse collection in the UK. We see your trucks on the street, but you are doing some really cutting edge projects as well as these things that you've shown me just now. What would you pick out with that in terms of feeding the nine billion people that we are going to have on the planet? Uh, if you start by, if you mention street, what I do see is actually urban mining and actually the street, you have the dust on the street and actually we've mined it and we found some palladium and platinum, so such as the one I have here. There is an equivalent of a thousand pounds here in this. Just in little, there. Yes, and actually found in the street sweepings. Uh, so that's, that's what I see when I see streets as well. Uh, in terms of feeding uh, humanity, you know, we, we say uh, there might be nine billion people uh, in a few decades. We have to feed them, so we are involved in many ways of making it more sustainable. One being actually uh, to grow lava onto bio waste so that we can feed animals with them back. Uh, that project we have in Malaysia as well as in France. So you can imagine it's quite cutting edge. And how really do you think you start to turn a national mindset towards reusing and recycling if they don't have the culture of doing it? Uh, I wouldn't say there is one country which has the, a natural mindset and another one which is a desperate case. Uh, actually, as long as you have some public will, uh, at times, you know, public pressure as well, uh, together with solutions such as the one Veolia brings, uh, then you can make a big difference and in a relatively short period of time. UK is a wonderful example of that. Uh, 15, 20 years ago, that was one country where we were going to landfill the most in Europe. Uh, and in 10, 15 years, this has dropped and been divided by two. Thanks to what? Thanks to solutions, thanks to investment like, uh, like us. We've invested one billion in the last five years in alternatives. So I guess, you know, the residents, as long as there is a solution, it's easy, uh, it's easy and, you know, to understand and everything. And actually it can make a difference. They go for it. 
And how do you think regulation needs to change? Because cities and municipalities, they are already required, aren't they, to manage water and waste and energy for the benefit of the environment? Um, may I correct you that, yes, some cities are, but is it like well spread, you know, in the world? You know, we still have 80% of wastewater, uh, which is rejected into the environment without being pre-treated at all, causing some health problem, as you might imagine. Uh, so there is still a long way to go, including in terms of legislation worldwide. Uh, but there is as well a need to actually uh, go and act as opposed to just put new legislation. So I guess implementation is the key. So we, we as a company are the doers here, helping our customer to actually put that into action. And what's the impact of digital transformation on your business? Uh, digital for us is really threefold. It's, you know, for our employees, so to enhance collaboration. The idea is to be able to offer the best of what Veolia know-how can provide anywhere in the world because you have a network of people connecting. It's as well, you know, digital for our operations, as in we have 10,000 plants in the world in Veolia. So by putting sensors, capturing data, then cleansing them, putting a little bit of artificial intelligence on top, uh, we can, you know, do predictive maintenance and so on and so forth, and in the end, be more efficient in what we do. And of course, the third bit is toward our customer and the very software we can imagine, thanks to digital. And what would you say, finally, to get people and governments and businesses more on board on the circular economy? I guess it's a call for action. You know, like we already have part of the solution to global warming, scarcity of natural resource. Uh, this is, you know, circular economy. And, you know, we are building more and more loops every month, every day, every year. So. Go for it and act now. Don't wait. Okay, on that note, Estelle, thank you very much. Thank you. That's all we've got time for now, but join us next time when we'll be hearing from another global thought leader. From me, though, Sarah Lockett at the London Stock Exchange Studios, it's goodbye and thanks for watching.